Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A God Shift. I am your host, Shana Rattler, and as always, I am thrilled that you are here. But before we get started, you know how I do it. I need a favor from you. So wherever you're listening to this episode, I want you to take a screenshot. And with that screenshot, I want you to post it on your social media, tag us here at A God Shift, and then I just want to hear your biggest aha moment or your biggest takeaway from this episode. And the reason why I do that is because my mission for all of my platforms is to be a beacon of hope for people when they're going through something. I want them to know that there's hope on the other side of that, and I want to help them find God in the middle of that. And so the more times that these episodes get shared, the more likely we are to help people in that manner. Well, y'all, listen. You know that every time I interview someone that I always say that I'm excited about my guest. Well, this episode is so, so special to me because the person that I am interviewing today wrote a book that I'm not going to say changed my life because I don't even think that fully gives it credit, but it saved my sanity. My son, so she wrote a lot of books. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but she wrote a book called Messy Journey, and it's all about helping your prodigal child come home. And <clears throat> right about three days after the pandemic started in 2020, my son went on a messy journey. And if it were not for someone recommending this book to me, I don't think I would have, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take a little bit of extra time this morning just because this is my show and I can. So at the back of my book, A God Shift, in my acknowledgments, I talk about this um, group that I was in, a small group at my church, and it was called a Adulting Parent, Parenting Adult Children. And it was led by um, two ministers in my church at that time. And I hope that I can find this. Oh, ha la 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 la. Anyway, I say in here, you help me to deepen my faith and keep my sanity in the process. And so that book was a book that in the middle of that journey, someone recommended it to me. And I don't think that I would have lost my faith during this messy journey because I'm just too far along in God for that. I just know too much about him. But I did question a number of days if I was going to lose my sanity. And if it was not for that book, and I'm not going to cry, but if it was not for that book, I just don't know where I would be. And I'm so, so grateful, Lori, because you wrote that book. Now, here's what's crazy is that Lori and I were actually face to face in May of this year, having a conversation about her, about her coming on the show. No, as a matter of fact, we were having a conversation about her most recent book. I did not realize y'all until I got home from that event that this was the person that wrote the book that saved my sanity. And it's probably a good thing because I probably would have fallen out in a puddle of tears right there in the middle of that showroom floor with thousands and thousands of people around. So I guess God knew what he was doing. But we get home from this event and because we're part of the same organization, there were some emails going around and I saw her last name and I was like, wait a minute, what? And so I remember I emailed you and I was like, oh my God, you are the Lori Waldenberg that wrote Messy Journey. Oh my God, you saved my life. And you, you, you know, and so here we are on the show. And so although I'm excited about all of my guests, I just can't wait to just give you the honor that is due to you, Lori, because you have been instrumental in my life. And I have been talking about this book for three years and I have been sharing this book as a resource for three years. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Dana, you're just, I'm just crying. Now, how are we supposed to do this? <laughs> Thank you for your, your encouragement and how God uses our hard stuff to help somebody else. Yeah. I, um, it was a hard book to write, you know, and, um, let me and say I, this about the book. And this is one of the things that is unique. And then I'm going to read your official bio. But one of the things that is so unique about this book is that Lori did not just write this book from her perspective of like the expert, like telling you what you should do. She co-authored this book with the prodigal child. And so you're hearing what the parent thinks that you should know and do, but you also get a chance to hear from the other side and hear from the child what it is that they think that you should say and do and not do in order to make the process more seamless. And I think that that is so instrumental because sometimes 
the experts or the parents tell you what to do from the parent perspective, but we never hear from the child because the child could think, no, that's the absolute worst thing you could have done, <laughs> you know? And so I love that about the, I love that about the book, but I want to read your official bio because you deserve that. So my guest today helps families build relationships that last a lifetime. That's her passion. She is a licensed parent and family educator, a national speaker and author or co-author of six books, including the award-winning book, Messy Hope help your child overcome anxiety, depression, or suicidal ideation. They are from the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. She's a mom to four, a mom in love to three, and a Mimi to four. And a perfect day in her world is a hike with her husband and their growing family. So I want to officially welcome to the show, Lori Wildenberg. Thank you so much, Shana. I am so excited to be here and yes. to talk yes. about the things that God does in the hard stuff. Yeah, so let's talk about what a God shift is. For those of you who are listening for the first time, all of my platforms are called a God shift, but I think it helps for me to define that. So my definition of a God shift is the moment a disruption in your life collides with God's purpose, but then that moves you into more possibility. And I believe that God uses the disruption. He uses unexpected circumstances, trials, sometimes even positive things that catch us off guard and leave us wondering what the heck am I supposed to do next? He uses those things to get our attention. And then once he has our attention, that's really when he can invite us, you know, into the life that he has planned for us. So Lori, I want to hear about some form of disruption that you've had to overcome to get to where you are today, being a fabulous author or co-author of six books and just a parent and family guru. <laughs> you know, none of us likes the unexpected, right? And um, we all have these ideas of the way that we think life ought to go, but we really live in the unexpected. That, that is where we live. And God takes those unexpected moments and he uses them um, in, in a way that, I mean, we might fight against it at first. Boy, I don't like those unexpected moments because those are tough, right? Because I have my plan and I have what I wanted to do yes. and I have control. <laughs> I know. And God should really be on board with that. <laughs> of course. But, you know, we live in this fallen world and people have free will and all of that. And we do too. And that spills into life. And God will use those hard moments to draw us closer to him. And in scripture, he says that... Um, when we suffer, he is near. Yeah. And, and I think we are most palatable and most open to the Lord when our hearts are hurting. Um, we are more able to receive what he has because he's always near, right? But we really feel his presence and the sense of him even if we're battling up against him. And um, I love how your show focuses on hope because you don't need hope and you aren't looking for hope unless you are in a mess, in the middle of a mess, in a what might appear to be a hopeless situation. And, um, you know, throughout my life, I've I've had a few of those, as you would call disruptions, things that I that weren't in my plan, and yet God used them. And just as you referred to, you know, messy journey, you know, how grace and truth offer the prodigal away home. I never expected that one of my four kids would step off the expected path. It wasn't in my plan. And yet God used that really, really hard time to teach me a lot of stuff. And we'll probably be talking about that, but also to draw me closer to him and um, also to help me love others better. So yeah. I, I do think that those disruptions, those interruptions, um, God can use those in a very powerful way if we are able to receive that because sometimes we don't want to receive it. Yeah. So. And so Lori, as you were going through your times of disruption, 
once you got on the other side of it, because sometimes we don't necessarily see what it is that we were really dealing with or what it was that we were supposed to learn or where the Lord was taking us in the middle of it, you know, it's oftentimes on the other side of it. And so once you got on the other side of your disruption, what would you say when you were able to look back what you learned about yourself? Yeah, well, I learned one thing that, um, you know, I, I never really gave much thought to, um, to certain groups of people. Let, you know, like the, um, those people that might be struggling with same sex attraction. I, I never thought that much about it. You know, I, uh, but I have a huge heart and a huge compassion for those who may be wrestling with, um, with things that they may be their parents or they didn't expect that they would be wrestling with. And, and I also learned that um boy god does such good things in those hard moments so that it draws up a bigger compassion in us to love people better yeah to love people with and in the midst of still hanging on to the lord's truth and expressing his grace we can do that um but it's not easy um, I think that's that is the tightrope walk of faith to be able to to believe and express God's truth, but at the same time also to express God's grace and mm -hmm. to have a hundred percent of both. And how do you do that? You know, I mean, it's easier to fall on one side or the other, right? It's easier to fall into slippery grace where it's all good. But that that's not true, yeah. and it's or it's easier to fall into the all truth. But that's that's really harsh. We need both, and um, to represent the Lord well, to represent His love and His word well. And I I don't know if I hadn't walked and and still am that that tightrope of faith. If I hadn't had to walk that, I don't. I don't know if I would really grasp that well, um, but, you know, and it's hard because there's pushback from various sides, you know, the side that's all grace yeah. doesn't like the truth and the side that's all truth doesn't like the grace. Yeah. It's tough. And um, anyway. So I'm curious, Lori, because you are a licensed parent and family educator. So you know a lot <laughs> in this area and you've written several books on, you know, different ways to help our children overcome, et cetera. And so what would you say, because I really believe that there are some things that prevent us from really being able to move forward. There are some things that probably prevent us from being able to help our children overcome. And I think that the angle of that for this show is so important. At the time of this recording, there is so much of an agenda and attack on our children that it is absolutely mind-blowing. And parents are left trying to figure out how do they help their children overcome all the craziness that is happening in the world, you know, from bullying to gender confusion, to, you know, just all of the things that are that are going on right now to destroy our world, to destroy our future, you know, because our children are the future. And so what do you know, Lori, about what are some of the barriers that really keep a parent from being able to help their children during this time? You talked about the fact of being able to strike that balance between grace and truth. But what are some of those common barriers that parents need to be aware of when they're trying to help their children overcome, whether it's anxiety, depression, bullying, something else they're facing in their lives? I think the very biggest one is fear. Mm -hmm. I think fear is huge. Uh, the parents that, you know, that are my clients, the parents that I coach and I work with, 
fear is the biggest thing, fear of losing their child, fear of losing relationship. That is the biggest one. That's number one. Fear is the biggest. Um, sometimes it's just a lack of, of knowledge or resources or feeling as though they need to handle this themselves. Um, that would be the next one, but fear overrides everything. But the, the next thing would be idea of needing to be independent and also feeling some shame perhaps um, in, in the midst of, of these things. When our, when our kids are little, the, the parents that I work with who have little kids, they don't feel shame if their, their kiddo is not sleeping well. They will reach out for help. Now, they might feel shame if their kiddos aren't being potty trained right away. There might be some shame with that. But let's, you know, if they're not eating well or if they're not sleeping well, they don't feel shame with those things and they will reach out for help and there's no big deal. But as our kids get older and the stakes get a little bit higher and the stakes are more about moral things and values and faith-based things, shame creeps in and people are, again, afraid to admit that here we are, and even in the church, bo the body of the church, um, they are afraid to admit or embarrassed to admit or want to protect their child's privacy. I mean, it could be all of those things. And Lori, could it also be that, you know, it's okay for they're taking a little bit longer to potty train or tie their shoes or whatever. It could be for a myriad of reasons. But I imagine that when it comes to some of those other things that the reason why the parents are are so um, shameful is because they feel like it's a reflection of something that they didn't do. And God forbid we open that up. Right. We want to be the perfect parent. Yeah. I, and And the idea behind it that isn't bad. I mean, we love our kids and we want to do the best for them and to glorify God in that. And so the passion behind that is important, but yet we aren't the, the perfect parent. In fact, when um, I, I speak to parent groups, I'll say, okay, everybody say, I am not the perfect parent. And, yeah. and, then, and then they all say it. And then I'll say, all right, you know, turn to the person next to you and say, and you aren't either. <laughs> and they, you know, they, they laugh, they're uncomfortable with that. But we, we try to, we size ourselves up. And then I have them point to me and say, and neither is she. So we, we need to learn from each other That's because so we do some things that are, you know, well, and some things not so well, and we aren't the perfect parent. And that is by design because God is the only perfect parent that calls us, that imperfection calls us to reach out to the Lord and to the people that he has in our lives so that we can, we're created that way, right? To help each other and to be each other's helpers. We, we need to have that interdependent relationship. So shame and the idea of independence and, and fear of losing relationships. I would say those are the biggest things that get in our way of um, moving forward during the disruption. And one of the things that's interesting to me is that that answer in part demonstrates that the enemy has no new tricks. Because, exactly. you know, by the time your episode comes out, it'll be probably episode like 120 or close to it. And every time I interview anyone from any background, when we start to talk about what some of the things are that actually come up in people's lives that keep them from being able to move forward. Because listen, when God allows something to happen in your life, he actually designed it to be a tool that moves you forward to a more powerful place. But these barriers are what prevent that from happening and we actually end up stuck. And it's so interesting that there's usually a common thread between the answers that are given. And that yeah. just means that the enemy has no new tricks. And so if you're listening to this, I want you to recognize, number one, you're not alone in the attack that the enemy is using on you. And number two, use that data to propel yourself into being able to shift your, perspe your perspective to say, listen, this is nothing new. I am not going to allow myself to get stuck by a liar 
that keeps telling the same lies over and over and over again. So let the fact that fear is so common, let that be something that gives you a leg up to be able to not allow fear to keep you stuck. Because number one, we know that that God is not the author of, of, of fear. So we know if we're feeling fear, that it's not something that the that God has given us. But number two, it's normal to feel fear. You just have to, I used to have a coach and she said, are you willing to do it afraid? <laughs> so are you willing to move forward and take at yes. least a small step despite the fear? But Lori, we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to give you the opportunity to share some tips with the parents of how they can begin to bring all of this together in their lives when they're find them, finding themselves in disruption as it pertains to their children. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by the free guide, When God Says Shift. Inside, you'll discover the four shifts required to reveal God's plan to ditch disruption or delay and get his blessings faster. Head to GodSaysShift.com to access it now. All right, all right. So typically after the break, I always ask people the question that I'm getting ready to ask you in the form of, what the listeners can do as it pertains to their own lives. And I guess it kind of is still pertaining to their own lives. But if a parent, because we're really talking a lot about how parents can help their children overcome the disruptions that they are going through, which in turn ends up being a disruption to our lives. As the mom and dad, our lives are disrupted when our children's lives are disrupted. As a matter of fact, this child of mine that I spoke of at the beginning of the episode called and woke me up at 1215 because he was at work and couldn't find his keys. Now I'm in Dallas, Texas, and he's in Memphis, Tennessee. What in the world was I supposed to do about him not knowing where his keys were? Isn't and that awesome, me though? five minutes later to tell me that he knew he knew where they were. I'm like, so yes, when our children's lives are disrupted, our lives are disrupted. So Lori, when a parent is in the process of being able to help their children overcome some of their own forms of disruption and they want to make sure that they shift this positively the best that they can i would say as quick as they can but sometimes the the timing we can't control but if a parent is listening and they say yes absolutely my child is in the middle of a disruption and i want to make sure that all of our lives are shifted forward in a more positive way during this process what would be the best tip that you could give them that they could start doing right away I think the idea of reaching out for help because God places somebody right in front of us to help us and, and to reach out and to be vulnerable. Um, Shana, here, you know, the conference that you and I were at together, I had two really crazy things happen. When I was, you know, that big corridor where all of the, you know, like where your booth was and set up and walking down, I think it was even that very corridor, on two separate occasions, two different women who I didn't know, they didn't know me, for whatever reason came up to me. One first came up to me and commented on my outfit. And then all of a sudden she said to me, my, my child just contacted me and said that they're really struggling with their life and they're considering taking their life. I didn't know this person. They didn't know me. They didn't know that I had this, this book, you know, um, Messy Hope. It was so bizarre. It happened twice. God puts people right in front of us. And of course, I had my little bag. So I had a book. I'm like, here, I think this is what you're meant to have. And then we prayed. It was crazy Love to be them. open to what God has. And to be vulnerable. I mean, those women were both so vulnerable to tell me a stranger about a struggle their kid was having. And they were drawn directly to me because the Lord somehow orchestrated this, which is beyond my brain. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy, but he has put people in our path and right in front of us. Now we have to be wise, right? Because there are some folks that 
are in our sphere that um, maybe are not necessarily safe people to talk with or, or people that we would want to share our child's private information with. Mm -hmm. But I think if we can be vulnerable, we can push that shame aside because everybody struggles with something. Scripture tells us, Jesus says in his own words, in this world, you will have trouble. Okay, amen, <laughs> right? In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Wow. So the reality is we're gonna have trouble. Our kids are gonna have trouble. And then to take heart because there is hope. And to remember that, for our kids to know that that life is life is good, but it's also hard, you know, and God is good. Life is hard. Life is hard and God is good. Yeah. And the, it's not always lined up. Life is good and God is good, right? It's life is God is good and life can be really hard. And to speak reality to our kids. Um, they are not always going to be happy, nor should they be, because how would they ever understand compassion and gain empathy and have an opportunity to be brave or courageous if they don't have things that make, you know, they experience sadness, if they don't have things where they experience a little bit of fear. We need to have those things in our lives to be a, a whole person, a person that has compassion, a person that steps up even when they're afraid, like you said, can you still move forward even in the fear? Yeah. You know, these are things that God wants for us. And so to have that sort of out of the box perspective as well. And we can do them, but some of us don't have the courage to take that first step. And I so I love the fact that your advice was get help because sometimes other people can walk alongside us and they can either say something or do something that will give us the strength and the courage that we need in order to be able to take that step, even if that step is shaky. Well, Lori, obviously I could talk to you all day long and with all of the knowledge you have and all of your books, we could help parents all day long, but there's ways that they can find you and get more from you. So how can they follow you on social media? On social media, you can find me on Instagram on Lori Wildenberg. You can also find me on Instagram at Moms Together. Um, and then on Facebook, uh, you can find me at Lori Wildenberg or also at Moms Together. And those are the two main places that, that I, you know, interact in. I'm also on LinkedIn as Lori Wildenberg and on Twitter. But my main places that uh, I seem to hang out would be Instagram and Facebook. And so if people want to take things further with you, Lori, do you have something that you would like to offer the audience? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm excited to offer this. If And you'll have this in the show notes. So, um, so that's really great. Thank you, Shana. Um, it will be, uh, they can get 21 spiritual blessings, things that they can say either to themselves, their spiritual blessing cards, uh, either to themselves or speak over their children. And uh, this is coming out right around Christmas time. And this will be a really, could even be a great stocking stuffer. Um, so if you go to lauriewildenberg.com slash blessings, you will be able to access those blessings. And then in the meantime, you will also sign up for my quarterly newsletter and monthly blog. So um, Great. thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for being willing to share with the rest of us what it is that you have learned along your messy journeys and your experiences with messy hope and everything else that you have written about. I am thankful to God for you. And I know that my listeners are going to be blessed by this as well. So thank you for being here. Thank you for dropping your nuggets. Everyone share, share, share this episode because parents are struggling. Our children are struggling. And so that means that we're struggling to try to figure out how we can help them. So please share this episode so that a parent can learn from this and a child's life can be better for it. Many of our children, their lives depend on this type of information. So please, please, please share, 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 and um, go back and listen to previous and future episodes of A God Shift as well. Everyone have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.